My name is Chris and today we are taking a look at a modern classic. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack. This video is sponsored by Dearborn Music. As a small business owner myself, I strive to spend my money at independent stores, especially when it comes to my record collecting. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you've probably heard me mention Dearborn Music in the past. They have been my favorite large record store for a very long time and for good reason. I'm able to find every new release I'm looking for in stock and there's always a massive influx of used records coming through the door every single week, seemingly by the truckload. They have every genre you could possibly want, including many of the hard to find releases that sell out everywhere else. If you're in Michigan, I would say that Dearborn Music is worth the drive from anywhere in the state. But as that's not always possible, Dearborn Music are happy to provide free shipping on every order over $50 to help you with your purchases. If you don't have a local record store as perhaps you live too far from one or the one near you just kind of sucks, do yourself a favor and try out Dearborn Music. Whether in person or online, you'll find that working with people who know the industry inside and out will be a much bigger help in your record collecting journey than scrolling mindlessly through some boring online mega retailer who doesn't value your business in near the same way. So help keep local record stores alive and visit Dearborn Music in person or online at DearbornMusic.net and thank you to these fine people for sponsoring this video. In the world of phono cartridges, there are a few names, if any, more widely recognized than that of Ortophone. Without going into a giant diatribe about the history of the company, I'll simply say that you are probably well aware of them and for good reason. Many a budding audiophile look to Ortophone for their first cartridge upgrade, usually in the form of a 2M red or blue. And as some of you progress in your hi-fi journey, you may choose to stick with a familiar company when it comes time to upgrade to a new piece of equipment. In this regard, Ortophone has you covered. After having reviewed the 2M Black LVB250 in a previous video, it seemed only right to review its moving quill counterpart, as it were. As with my previous review, I won't be going into all the differences between a moving magnet and a moving coil cartridge, but the gist of it is this. In a moving magnet cartridge, a magnet is attached to the end of the cantilever to transfer the record's vibrations to surrounding coils, which, in turn, send that signal to your phono preamp. In a moving coil setup, there are incredibly tiny hand-wound coils at the end of that cantilever that send your record's vibrations to a much larger and stationary magnet before moving it up the signal chain. What does that mean for you? Quite simply, a moving coil cartridge is generally more agile and capable of detail because of its lower mass cantilever assembly and fulcrum point. In light of this, most, not all, vinyl enthusiasts tend to prefer a moving coil cartridge and make that their end goal for upgrading. With the LVB250 priced the same as the Quintet Black we're reviewing today, you may wonder how they stack up. We will get to that. But first, let's talk about some of the specifics of the Ortofone Quintet Black S moving coil cartridge. Coming in at $1,099, like the LVB, the Quintet immediately takes a different path, and not just because it's a moving coil. For one thing, it's a heavier cartridge, weighing in at 9 grams to the LVB's 7.2. The pedestrian-looking shell, which may or may not be to your liking, is made from a mix of ABS and aluminum, which gives it its sturdy weight and helps to reduce unwanted vibrations throughout its entirety. Its recommended tracking force is also higher at 2.3 grams compared to the 1.6 of the LVB. This, most likely, has to do with the internal pivot point of the moving coil and the low output it produces, along with the inclusion of a sapphire cantilever instead of a boron or aluminum one. More on that in a bit. With only 0.3 millivolts of output, you'll want to make sure that you have a phono preamp that is up to the task of amplifying this signal comfortably. I made use of my EAT, Eglo Petite, and a Project Phonobox S3B throughout my time with the Quintet Black. Both of these were more than capable of handling the necessary workload to make this cartridge sound its best. As with every order phone cartridge I've unboxed, you'll find their classic, if not timeless, plastic cylindrical case that houses the cartridge itself, along with the instructions, a tracking force scale, mounting screws and matching screwdriver, and a stylus cleaning brush. As mentioned previously, Ortofone do not recommend using liquids of any kind to clean your styli. The risk of corrosion to the stylus adhesion isn't worth the potential damage in their eyes. Using a nice, simple dry brush should be more than enough to keep up with your record cleaning if you do it regularly. If you've not set up a fine line stylus cartridge before, such as a new Shibata stylus employed in the Quintet, you may consider hiring a professional to do this. 
While not overly difficult once you've learned the techniques, it can be quite daunting to get such a fine line to sit properly in your record screws if you're new to the process. You can just ask around at your local hi-fi dealer or poke around online to find somebody qualified. This stylus is attached, as mentioned before, to a sapphire cantilever. This is what makes the new version of the Quintet Black different from the previous one. It's also the reason for the S moniker at the end of the cartridge's title. But why sapphire as opposed to boron or aluminum? At the outset, it simply had to do with supply and demand. When the Quintet Black first was introduced, it did indeed employ a boron cantilever. As discussed in my review of the LVB cartridge previously, boron is an exceptional material for a cantilever. But what do you do when materials aren't available? This was the question Ortofone faced when that exact problem presented itself. With a lack of boron in the marketplace, Ortofone were forced to come up with a solution. This, of course, was to introduce a new sapphire cantilever into the mix. The choice to use sapphire, in part, according to the engineers at Ortofone, is because the sound difference between the two cantilever materials in this cartridge are practically indistinguishable. While sapphire is indeed almost twice as heavy as boron, its hardness is also very close to boron as measured on the Mohs hardness scale. Coming in at a 9 compared to boron's 9.3, sapphire's ability to accurately transfer a record's vibrations certainly make it an excellent choice. Boron, of course, did become widely available again on the open market, but rather than switch the design of the Quintet Black once more, Ortofone instead opted to keep the sapphire cantilever with the Quintet and move the boron cantilever to the, at the time, new LVB. Would a boron cantilever be a better choice for the Quintet? Quite possibly, yes. But at the cost of having to retool their setup once again and then market yet another change, I can understand why Ortofone went the route they did. For the truly curious amongst you and those with the financial means, you might choose to find an older Quintet Black and compare it to the Black S. I myself won't be doing this as I'm quite pleased with the Quintet as it is, and I'd rather keep that money for other purchases. This works as a fine segue to talk about just how this cartridge sounds and whether or not it's worth your hard-earned money. Not being above using a childhood throwback to try and elicit a cheap laugh and to make a somewhat valid point, I direct you to today's secret word. Balanced. <laughs> While I won't be encouraging you to scream really loud wherever you go for the rest of the day when you hear it, as entertaining as that might be, it will be making a regular appearance in this review. Make no mistake, the Ortofone Quintet Black S is indeed tremendously balanced. <laughs> this doesn't surprise me in the least, as that is what Ortofone were after with this cartridge. Upon hearing it, however, I can't help but mention their complete success in this pursuit. Let me say this before moving on though, do not confuse balanced with boring or lackluster. The Quintet is far from that. Its highs ring true and bright, and the mid-range is ever clear and present, and the low end has an abundance of depth. Using a few different amplifiers over the duration of my time with the Quintet, such as the Heaven 11 Billy Amp Mark II, a Hegel H90, a Hegel H390, I connected them to the aforementioned phono preamps and went back and forth with a pair of Buchart S400 Mark IIs and a pair of Alta Audio Alyssas, both are stand mount speakers. I even mixed in the use of my SVS 3000 micro subwoofer from time to time along with a pair of Golden Ear Super Sub Xs. All in all, I'd say these components brought out a very clear indication of just what the Quintet Black S could do and it did a lot. A multitude of records were played during my extended time with the Quintet, all of which gave me exactly what I wanted to hear from them, but one in particular surprised me, even though it probably shouldn't have. After all, I learned well over two decades ago from an engineer at General Motors that they employ the use of classical music almost exclusively when designing their car stereo systems. This is, of course, far from a car stereo, but the telephone compressing of Bach's Brandenburg Concertos from 1964 simply blew me away. From soaring strings to the delicate vibratos within, the quintet faithfully brought out the beautiful tones of the string section and their upper mid-range performance. The brass section blended seamlessly with their textured and bright tones, filling the spaces that the strings purposely left behind. Every instrument was articulate and accurate in their sound and presented an appropriate challenge to the quintet, hence why GM used classical music in making their designs in the first place. The lower mid-range of the cellos and deep resonance of the double bass weren't left out of the showcase either. While easy to ascertain in the mix, they were also never overbearing even when using both of the super subs I have currently in for review. 
The poise of the quintet, again, showing its ability to take the widest of frequencies and present them accurately and enjoyably with an even keel. I went back to the well again and again with this collection of records and found myself impressed with what I was hearing each and every time. Sadly though, this is just more proof that classic record production seems to be superior to today's in every facet. The good news is though, that the quintet will happily take these quality recordings and reward the listener with a precise blend of all the timbre and tonality one could possibly want. While it won't make your harsh sounding pressings perform with a complete sense of burnished fluidity, it also won't color them inaccurately and leave you dissatisfied with its efforts. Now, the Quintet Black will give you exactly what is on the record with a smooth, articulate, harmonious, and yes, balanced <laughs> presentation. This is something I personally clamor for when looking for a new cartridge or reviewing one here at home. An additional adjective that fits the sonic performance description here, in addition to balanced, would be harmony. I think this is actually the word people are looking for when they use the term musical to describe how a product sounds, a term which makes absolutely no sense in this regard, but I digress. The Quintet Black has a harmonious blend of frequency reproduction across the range and it made every record I played easy to listen to. Sitting back and simply enjoying the music was as effortless as listening intently to pick up the finest nuances of the cartridge's performance. This leads us to how the cartridge performed against its moving magnet counterpart, the LVB-250. The first thing you'll notice when comparing both cartridges is that the LVB is more lively in its tone. Not more detailed, mind you, but it has a more energetic presentation. It is more forward in nature than the Quintet, which I found to be quite neutral in that regard. This isn't a surprise, of course, considering the moving magnet nature of the LVB, but it is certainly the biggest difference in sound. For accurate detail in sonic reproduction, I would say that the Quintet edges out the LVB in its abilities. It's not that the frequency range is any different. Both cartridges can produce the widest of bands to complement any music you'd like, but the, dare I say, balanced <laughs> nature of the Quintet offers what I consider to be a more mature sound. Perhaps this is why many, if not most, audiophiles seem to prefer a moving coil cartridge over a moving magnet. But it's not like the LVB is lacking in any one area though. The overall feel of the quintet is just more to my liking. You, however, might prefer the more energetic feel and lively pace of the LVB. This is why I think it is an excellent idea for Ordophone to offer these two contrasting pieces for the same money. An additional consideration is that you won't need as particular a phono preamp for the LVB as you will with a quintet. Does that make the decision any easier? Well, that's only a question you can answer. While its simply basic looking shell leaves much to be desired in my opinion, the sonic performance contained within more than makes up for this lackluster dressing. With its fantastic and faithful reproduction of the sound contained within your record screws, I'd say the Ortofunk Quintet Black S is definitely worth your consideration. You will be hard pressed to find superior performance at this price point. So much so that I unhesitatingly give this cartridge the red seal. If you have a phono preamp with a competent range of gain options and you're on the market for an exceptional moving coil cartridge around the $1,000 mark, you would be doing yourself a disservice in passing this by. Thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch and I look forward to next time.